गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द लास्ट टॉपिक ऑफ अर चैप्टर सेक्टर्स ऑफ इंडियन इकोनॉमी एंड इन टूडेज मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस डिविजन ऑफ सेक्टर्स एज ऑर्गेनाइज एंड अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर एंड ऑल्सो एज पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट सेक्टर्स सो फर्स्ट वट इज ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर्स इट इज अ सेक्टर वेयर द एम्प्लॉयमेंट टर्म्स आर फिक्सड एंड रेगुलर एंड द एम्प्लॉयज गेट एश्योर्ड work okay so all the all the offices or government jobs where you see people are working they all come under organized sectors they are registered by the government and have to follow its rules and regulations okay which are given in various laws such as factory act minimum wage act payment of gratuity act shops and establishment acts so in short they have to follow all the rules and regulations made by the government people those who are working in these sectors job is regular and have fixed working hours if people work more they get paid for overtime by the employees workers enjoy the security of employment people working in the organized sectors get several other benefits from the employer such as paid leave payment during holidays and provident fund gratuity etc and they also get medical benefits the factory managers has to ensure facilities like drinking water and safe working environment and when they retire these workers get pensions as well so examples of organized sectors as i already told you are government employees registered industrial workers anganwadi workers village village health workers etc okay so obviously the conditions working condition in organized sector is quite good now let's see in unorganized sectors what is the condition the unorganized sector is characterized by small and scattered units which are largely outside the control of the government okay there are rules and regulations but they are not followed since they are not registered with the government jobs are low paid and often not regular employment is not secure people can be asked to leave without any reason there is no provision of overtime paid leave holiday leave due to sickness etc and there is no uh, such facilities in the un- uh, unorganized sectors examples of the unorganized sectors are shopkeeping farming domestic workers laborers rickshaw pulling etc so you can see in unorganized sectors the condition working hours salaries is not fixed and people are forced to work in very in, in very unhealthy unhygienic environment and in the present time as you all know lockdown is going on we can see a clear impact of the life of the people those who are working in organized and unorganized sectors this is just an example i have taken to explain you in organized sector still people have the jobs they are getting the salaries they have food on table and they have houses to live but in organized sectors there is no job no wages no food to eat and no place to live and as you all are aware about the migrant news that people are even forced to walk to their hometowns on foot there is no means of transportation also available for them so at present time the working the condition of the people working in unorganized sector is very very bad now organized sectors versus unorganized sectors so the uh, when we compare the conditions of both organized and unorganized sectors it is obviously people like to work in on uh, in organized sectors why the why the organized sectors offer job that are most sought after but the employment opportunity in an in the organized sector has been expanding very slowly it is also common to find many organized sectors enterprises in the unorganized sectors okay it, but it means that many organized sectors like for example schools we have uh, established schools also and we have a uh, small schools also on the without any proper affiliation of the cbsc or any other educational board okay they are also running the schools but they are paying salaries very low salaries to the teacher we have also organized sectors uh, 
working as unorganized sectors they adopt strategies to evade taxes and refuse to allow laws that protect laborers as a result a large number of workers are forced to enter the unorganized sector where they are often exploited and not paid fair wages their jobs are not secured and have have no other benefits okay so question comes how to protect workers in unorganized sectors there is a need for protection and support of the workers in unorganized sectors here are few points which help in doing so first the government can fix the minimum wages rate and working hours the people the government can provide cheap loan to self employed of people so that they can start their own business they don't have to depend on others government can provide cheap and affordable basic services like health education food to these workers and the government can frame new laws which can provide uh, provision for overtime paid leave leave due to sickness etc to protect the workers in unorganized sectors now the next topic we have is public sector what is public sector it is a sector that the government owns most of the assets and provides all the services for so you can say bharat heavy electrical limited bharat petroleum indian oil uh, they are all public sectors and one of the largest public sector is your indian railway in the public sector the government own most of the assets and provide all the services the purpose of the public sector is not to just earn profit its main aim is public welfare now we come to the private sector in private sector ownership of assets and delivery of services is in the hands of private individuals or companies here some of the private individual companies we have microsoft wipro tata okay they are uh, infotech they are all the private sector companies companies like tata iron and steel company limited or reliance industry limited are privately owned companies activities in the private sector are guided by the motive to earn profit now since most uh, of the uh, services given by private sector is costly so to make sure that all the people have access to the facilities the government try to give this responsibilities to uh, this facilities to the government uh, to the people so uh, responsibilities of the government and or you can say contribution of public sector for economic development of a nation there are large number of activities which are primarily responsibility of the government because there are services needed by the society as a whole but which private private sector cannot provide at a reasonable cost for example government has to undertake the heavy spending such as construction of roads bridges railways harbors generating electricity providing irrigation through dams etc also it has to ensure that these facilities are available for every one there are some activities which the government has to support to encourage the private sector to continue their production of business for example selling electricity at the cost of generation may may push the cost of production of goods in many industries many units especially small scale units might shut down so government here steps in by provide producing and supplying electricity at rates which these industries can afford government has to bear part of the cost the government in india buys wheat and rice from the farmers at fair price and set at lower prices to the consumer through ration shop in this way it supports both farmers and consumers then running proper schools and providing quality education health education facilities are for all are some of the duties of the government okay the government also needs to pay attention to aspects of human development such as availability of safe drinking water housing facilities to the poor and nutrition taking care of poorest and most ignorant regions of the country okay so with this the chapter is over in this chapter uh, we have discussed about organized and unorganized sectors public and private sectors and contribution of public sector in economic development of nation so after reading the chapter try to these these questions also and with this the chapter is over thank you